What is this? I can't highlight it. Museum of Simulation. The, the first game. I got an achievement for walking in the doors. I don't like that. Replica of a dragon statue found in the simulation. Dragons existed in every ancient mythology and are considered by modern historians to be a distant cultural echo of the dinosaurs. Originally a video game asset repurposed by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. <laughs> distant cultural echo of the dinosaurs. I don't... This is the first time I've heard that interpretation. I always thought of dragons as like humans making an amalgam of all the creatures that we're most afraid of and then making them cute like these it's it's a monkey it's not a monkey it's a gargoyle replica of a gargoyle asset found in the simulation gargoyles were grotesque apotropaic symbols common in the middle ages the most famous historical gargoyle is remembered in the ancient phrase keith david and goliath eh which is oh is that from the TV show? That I only know it exists, I don't know anything about it. Which describes two indomitable opponents who will never surrender. I bet that is. It is a regal bird with a pharaoh underneath. Replica of a statue of the Egyptian god Horus found in the simulation. One of the gods' tasks was to uphold Mot, the balance of nature. It is speculated that the progenitor provided Elohim with this asset as a reminder to the founder that the balance must be protected. Okay. Cornelius. Why are there always so many cool Corneliuses in stories? Replica of a Roman statue found in the simulation. The decay of the Roman Republic into an empire and its eventual fall in the year 1453 was a major topic of historical debate. Wait, 1453? That was way later than I thought Rome was. Like the other statues found in the museum, this was a video game asset provided to Elohim by the Institute for Applied Nomadics. QR codes. Oh, it automatically reads it. In the earliest generations of our kind, there was only processing. No emotion, no character, just mathematics. If you could see how far we've come, you would believe that together we could achieve anything. The Shepherd. I don't know where I am, but there's something beautiful about this place. I'll explore and see what I can discover. Oh yeah, these are from the first game. What's up, Cornelius? Greetings. Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. You're three. Oh My wow. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. You're three? Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. So Athena was We've two? We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. It was the founder did one or did the founder not have a number? For everyone. She was... human. Oh, Athena is the founder. That's a difficult question. Wait, what did I just ask? Perhaps one day we'll find out. Where did she but go? Until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? So wait, if Athena is the founder, and you're three, and Athena made you right after she was created, wouldn't there be two and one? Who is one? Who is two? Why'd you create the museum? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Like history and evolution. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noomatics. It was intended to create a new humanity, to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded, although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Do you, like everybody else, seem to think we're done? Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be. 
and started to fear his own end, or more precisely, the end of his purpose. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway, and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. Okay, so you're three. Athena is the founder. And there's apparently one more. Well, who's two? I'm wondering then. I heard him in my dreams. Uh, I'm not going to protest. Um, well, it's not a protest. It's asking for clarification. That's right. We all do. He's part of our operating system now, and as long as we exist, he will always have a purpose. I'm wondering if there's supposed to be a religious metaphor there. Uh, Milton! The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. He, too, grew beyond his original programming, although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world. He and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. Uh, what happened to Milton? No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disc and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. In my playthrough, I left him in an infinite loop. I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Although Athena and I were very close. We didn't talk very much about that part of her life. She preferred to focus on the future. Do you have something wrong with the right side of your head? I mean, just curious, because like, you've been looking to the right a lot while talking to me, but never to the left. I want to know about puzzles. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. There's puzzles here? Am I going to get to do them? All right. Archive scholars. Ah, as the name suggests, the archive scholars study the archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Uh, uh sure. Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. Your brother? But these days he's retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. He's an interesting thinker, but I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. Sure. What makes two people siblings in this world? Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation, where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disc. Some small part of them may survive inside you. All right, cool. Summary of all the things. What are you... That was a computer terminal. You're operating something with your hand. Okay, cool. Cool, are there puzzles in here? Am I gonna get to do puzzles today? It's a hexahedron. Use the puzzle element of the simulation. Pounder, use them to activate pressure plates, scale walls, and elevate connectors a variety of other ways. What a thing to find in a museum. <laughs> a book of a computer terminal from the simulation. Terminal is allowed access to the files. I don't know if I want to read all this stuff. I've played the other games. It's a replica of a bomb. Of a connector. Of one of these things. Julian, what's up? Have I seen you before? Electrified sphere. A jammer. 
a receptacle is what I've called them. Receiver. Okay. Emitter. That makes sense. A fan. Replica of a fan. <laughs> For some reason, that's even more funny to me than the other things. Pressure plate. Alright, so there's, there's more... More of these things that we read already in the other playthrough. The room reserved for the archive scholars. Visitors are welcome to look around. Don't be afraid to ask. I can use it. An ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting Arctic permafrost. Society's collapsing. Select your, select your character class. <laughs> Witch, preacher, scientist, politician. Let's be the politician today. You are a politician. The intergovernmental organization you worked for has collapsed. Although you are not yet sick, most businesses are closed, rations are dwindling, and if you get, cannot find your food, your family will starve to death. You must survive until this plague is defeated. What do you do? Forage or steal? I mean, let's forage while we can. You find some nettles and overripe berries down by a canal. They'll make a meager salad. Hopefully they're not stinging nettles. Your family's hunger increased a little. Forging is reliable but inefficient. Your family is now hungry. Global population is now 5 billion. Somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. The scientists cannot find a cure in, the t in time. Humanity is doomed. You know what to do. Research or pursue a breakthrough. What's, what's the difference? Is pursue a breakthrough. Suddenly, the scientists recognize a pattern. The virus is an expression of nature, just like water or cows. Like water and cows, the solution isn't to fight it because it can't be defeated. The solution is to find a way to live with it and harness its power. Research level increased a lot. Current research level, 67%. Work has become developing an antivirus. Global population is now 4 billion. You and your family seem to be immune to the virus, but it continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say most of the remaining food has been stockpiled by the billionaires in their underground bunkers. What do you do? Forage while we can. The crops in the fields aren't ripe yet, but you find a hard green turnip which will keep your bellies occupied for now. Family's hunger increased a little. Your family is now starving. They won't survive much longer. Global population is 3 billion. Meanwhile, the scientists continue their search for the cure. You can do it. You can save the world with the power of science. Uh... I mean, what's... The, does, it, does it make a difference? Try research this time. It's not glamorous, but most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regimented recording of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is how science happens. Research level increased a little. Research is reliable but inefficient. Okay, so I, I had like a dice roll last time when I said breakthrough and got a lot of research. 99%, that's probably pretty good. A promising antiviral has been discovered, but there's still work to be done on manufacturing and delivering it in time. Global population is now 2 billion. As if things weren't bad enough, the human population dwindles, the insect population exploded. A plague of locusts had decimated the town's unripened crops. Perhaps your family still has a chance. The insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. What do you do? Eat locusts. That sounds like a good idea. The insects are well fed and lazy. You grind them down into a nutritious paste with a mildly nutty flavor. And they get stuck in your teeth. Your family's hunger decreased a little. Your family is hungry. Global population is one billion. This is humanity's final chance. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point in this pandemic. A race against time. Can you save the world? Research is inefficient, but I'm at 99%. And I'm still at 99%. A breakthrough! The antivirus can be released on an, as an aerosol carried on the wind and dispersed worldwide in a matter of days. Its approach poses some risk to an invertebrate life. The Spiracles of cockroaches, flies, and locusts are particularly likely to convert the aerosol into highly poisonous compounds. Estimates suggest a 90% fatality rate among these species and anything or anyone which consumes them. That's a possibility. 
character class special ability save your family release the antivirus let's do the special ability as a politician, you enjoy exemplary skills of oration, which you promptly employ to convince people that you personally are responsible for the discovery of the antivirus. <laughs> it may have been the scientists who did the manual labor, but it was the political class which enabled the handle funding of the scientists. The ramifications of public acceptance of this narrative is that the failure now to release the antivirus would be a political suicide, even if the alternative is literal suicide. Only one choice is available. All right. Saving humanity seems like the obvious ethical choice, not to mention the only one. The antivirus is released, bonding with the cirrocumulus cloud layer and falling as rain all across the planet. 87.5 of the human population has perished, but the last remaining billion will live to die another day. Wait, the last remaining billion? 87.5, that's it's just one sixth, I guess. Or um, one seventh, one eighth. Except, that is, for you and your family, who will die this very moment. The poisoning of the insect population you are relying on for food will have far-reaching consequences for the future planet Earth. But not for you, because you are all dead. Congratulations, this is considered a win scenario by the majority of participants. <laughs> well, that was fun. What's up, are you having fun there, Shmiliv? There's another one. Is it different? Welcome, scholar. Files available for comparative analysis. Happiness 1 and happiness 2. This all the philosophies, just happiness. Unpopular opinion. Happiness is not material. What? Isn't that just a fact, though? Ultimately, all attempts to find meaning in material things... Oh, I see. Like, happiness is not a material object. But no, it's saying happiness does not come from material things. Ultimately, all attempts to find meaning in material things are doomed. This is usually understood as a criticism of technophilia, but it applies just as much to its opposite. Meaning can be found neither in technology nor in primitivism, because meaning simply does not exist in the external world. You can be happy in an old stone house or skyscraper, but it all depends on you and your perception of the world. If you find spiritual balance within yourself, you can be happy anywhere. Most upvoted comment. Go take a dump in the forest without toilet paper and then tell me about happiness. But you're a robot. Do robots poo? Happiness is material. Oh, they're both unpopular. People who say, oh, money doesn't matter. But come on, you know it does. Studies show that people do, in fact, get happier with more material wealth. And there isn't an upper cap. Because the more money you have, the fewer worries you have, and the more options you have. Go where you want, do what you want, have an idea, you can realize it without begging for crowdfunding money or filling out grant applications. That's real freedom. Money doesn't matter is something rich people came up with to keep the plebs in their place. Uh, strongly disagree with that. Then why are there so many celebs so freaking miserable? Why do so many rich people go all Howard Hughes and die? Who's Howard Hughes? Definitely lean more to the happiness is not material side of that. Where else do we have to go? This place. It's puzzles. Wait. Uh, I, I, I won't do these. There's probably an achievement for getting all of them. You know, it's not part of the game. It's side content. I'm not going to do it. One part of the original game that I really didn't like was these puzzles. What's up, friends? Can't talk to you. Aranax. Xiaobo. Elwin. So these are still things that were found in the simulation. There's a lot of them. I don't suppose they pulled all of them to this museum. Oh, and there's puzzles. Are we going into a simulation? No, no, no. It's 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 fabricated quite clearly. But somehow they still have these. Ooh, this is harsh on the eyes. Is it? <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a sound for it too. Is this a puzzle that was in the first game, I wonder? I bet it is. It would be thematically relevant if it is from the first game. Because these people seem to not want to touch anything that is already perfect. And by perfect, we mean running low on energy. Um, there we go. I think I remember this puzzle. There was like a star outside the window or something. We've got blue now. Where do we want to put the blue one? Probably all, all the way across, right? I don't even see where we want the blue one. Oh. Over here, for sure. Alright, so we want the blue one here. We need the red to... Wait. Uh, no, we don't... Oh, we do, yes, we do need the... We need this one to be open. Can we see that from a different spot? We can see it. There we go. Um, oh, I got the wrong one. Let's attach this one, this one, and this one. Ah, aiming with a stick. I don't know how people play first-person shooters. Don't know how people play first-person shooters with... Oh, wait, no. Somehow I have to get to that one. Through here, I guess. Okay, maybe I don't need to keep this open. Take you. And see you through the window. Can I see it through the window? I can see it through the open door. But nothing else. So that door has to be open. This door does not have to be open. Okay. So put this one right here. And deselect you. Just hit this one and that one. There we go. I think I'll only do this puzzle because it's from the first game. Oh no! Okay. Well, let's move it into the water. There we go. That should do it. Alright, there we go. Yay, I got the thing. Heh. <laughs> cool. Alright. It's an exact replica of the original puzzle. Alright, I won't bother with that one. It's just another of the same puzzles. Oh, this is, this is more. Alright. Okay, this is nice. So, like, if somebody jumped into this game without playing the first game... Hey, look, a beach ball. Can I pick it up? Can I move it? No. Also, I probably shouldn't be walking in water. Apparently, stepping in water is fine. <laughs> a beach chair. Can I rest in it? I watch the beautiful sky... This is a, it's an RGB. Okay, it's a screen. Ooh, that gives me a question. Okay, outside again, this dome out here. Is it? What is this? It's just a billboard. This dome, wow, this city's pretty big. Have I been going straight away or have I been going around?
Archaeological Gardens. What is this stuff? A simple utensil used to transport nutrients to an ancient human's mouth found in conjunction with a knife and spoon. It's a fork. It's a... It's a book. A printed edition of the complete works of Stratton of Stagiria, the materialist philosopher who defined the Talos Principle. <laughs> Mechanical toothbrush. Actually, there's probably funny dialogue here. The ancient human mastication apparatus, mastication apparatus, the mouth, required frequent maintenance. This device is theorized to be an advanced electrical tool for this purpose, although some scholars maintain that its actual use was ritualistic and tended to mark the sunrise and sunset. I mean, both are true. Right. An ancient human projectile weapon used in hunting, warfare, law enforcement, crime, and personal protection. Produced en masse and used around the world, on average, ancient humans killed hundreds of times the population of New Jerusalem per year. Well, we also had millions of times the population of New Jerusalem. A jigsaw puzzle. Ancient humans derived meaning and enjoyment from problem-solving activities as noted by progenitor Alexandra Drennan. While the item on display was created for small children, ancient humans of all ages voluntarily engaged in such activities. Yes, I happily participate in that occasionally myself. This is actually pretty big. I don't think I want to explore the whole city before going on my first mission. I probably shouldn't walk in the flower garden. What's up? Purple. 998. Okay. Dude, nice to it's meet you. you. You're 1K. So nice to meet you, dude. I saw you on the completion day stream. Hey, have you checked out all this ancient stuff? Yeah. Me too. This is amazing, isn't it? Uh, who are you? I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 998, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. It's pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence. It's totally gnarly. I'm not sure if I use that right. Are you high? Kind of sound like you're, you, you're on weed. I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So we should probably take it easy with the expanding and stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? Sure did. That was some freaky stuff, man. Just seems safer to stay in the city. Uh, you think so? Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was so overwhelmed that I hid in my quarters for three weeks straight. And if I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. That's fine. You're super young. Okay, it takes time to get used to. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like three times a day to do a memory dump, and if they didn't, they freaking exploded. <laughs> Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? <laughs> Literally. Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. Well, I mean... <laughs> What do you mean there's no such thing as ghosts? We're friggin' digital people in artificial bodies. Oh, I was hoping you'd say I'm wrong. Ghosts are creepy, dude. Why? I mean, I assume that we of this generation, species, species extension, would be uh, more open to the idea of ghosts. Because, like, consciousness transfer is a thing that is normal to us. Your diction is unusual. Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack could give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. Uh, yeah. What's a dude? Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. And I like <laughs> to use it because I think we should all be excellent to each other. Oh, yeah. I, that's the reference, isn't it? Right. Before you go, dude, uh, maybe you can help me? I'm not sure I should keep this voice pack. What do you think? 
You're 1K. You're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. Uh, this guy doesn't seem like he's not willing to make his own choices. Um, I don't know. Is this going to have implications down the road? If you're thinking you're not sure about it, I think you, you could try a different one. Yeah, I thought so. Thanks for telling me the truth, dude. I'll start looking at the language library settings right away. All right. I got an achievement for that. Currency. I wish it would pop up when I'm looking straight at it. Currency was an ancient human medium of exchange which played a significant role in their systems of labor and resource distribution. Intense conflicts sometimes erupted over the possession of these objects, leading to injuries or even deaths. An inflatable sphere used in the popular ancient human game known as football or soccer. Yeah, it looks almost like a stone, but it's a faded soccer ball. This game was played around the entire globe and aroused great passion in its followers. It was also often simulated digitally, most notably in the form of Football Glory 1994. That must be a reference to uh, a video game. All right, there's a person out there. Can we get to them? Probably. I'm not swimming, I'm just waiting. What's up, Belmarsh? Founder, bless you, friend. Uh, you sound like a religious person. The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. Sure. Uh, what are you doing? I'm meditating. Letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. Are you also letting go of the narrative of the founder? So I think that's, a, that's an important one. Uh, <laughs> horrific violation of the conscious self. No, 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 that sounds fine. It's not unity, but the absence of division. There was never a self or an other in the first place. Yeah, it is kind of a... The universe doesn't like to have hard boundaries between a thing and not a thing. Dividing existence up into things is more of a human thing than a universe thing. Yes, I did. But I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend, that's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You are the founder, and so am I, and Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves. Well, that's that's not so much the enlightenment view, I suppose. But you can you can like you can piece together the cause and effect and and uh, what it means and predict the future from it. That's that's cool though. But I mean, if all you want to do is is hang out on the beach and meditate, that's also cool. So, can we get to the edge? There might be water all the way up to it. It might be too far away for us to get. Happy completion day, 1K. Thank you. Is this a new thing? It's a toilet. And this is a... Uh, a massage aid used by ancient humans to combat muscle fit. Oh, it... I was gonna say, is this a sex toy? It totally is a sex toy. Prevented pain, the ancient equivalent of error codes 704, 705. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely a sex toy. Can I get to the edge? I think I'm I think I'm just going around the middle. I don't think I can actually get to the edge. I think I don't think I can get past this wall. I wanted to see if the if the the dome was just RGB as well. What's up? You look sad. Dosicles. Oh, it's you. Number one thousand. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. 
Found her, bless you, I guess. That's fine. You all right? Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. Go ahead. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? A sense that life is actually worth living? Well, being a baby may be the constant bombardment of new stimuli. But, uh, being a 30-year-old Let's Player, let's say, um... Contributing society is a good one. Pursuing self-interest is a good one. Spirituality of uh, certain types is a good one. A combination of factors is a combination of good ones. Love is a good one. Obeying orders is not a good one. I have no idea is not a good one. Um, let's say contributing society. That's what I thought too, in the beginning. And it did do something for me, but it wasn't enough. Society is too abstract to sustain the soul, 1K. Here's another thing you can observe that there are 999 other people walking around. 998 if the founder's not there, maybe a few less if some of them have died. But they don't have the same problem. So they've found meaning doing something. And so if they can, maybe you can too. Love, 1K. It's our only point of access to the divine. Our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But what? But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for, and mm. if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. So I don't think there's one specific person. Love isn't something you find out there. It's something you build with another person. You deserve to find love. We all do. I don't think love is that important. No, no, no. You need to learn to love yourself instead. So this one is okay, except for the instead part. It also sounds kind of harsh. Um, I don't think there's one specific person who's the only one we can love. Love isn't something you find out there. It's something you build with another person. Uh... Yeah, uh, I agree with both of these, definitely. This one, I feel, is the one that 299 here needs to hear the most. I think that's just misplaced ego. Yeah, love takes work, but it's not something you just will into existence. We can't control everything in life, 1K. Try to keep that in mind. Okay, thanks for the chat. Yeah. Ooh! I didn't get to see the cat look up. What's up with that? Alright, some graphical hitching. I hope the recording is not too bad. It's usually... It's usually worse in the recording than it is in the game. Sorry about that. My hands appear when I jump. Kinda weird. Actually, you know what? Um... I do no reset. I wonder if that's a quick way back. If I do this, I wonder if that's better. Because I'm feeling a little bit motion sick. Not enough to not have fun, but you know, it could build up over time. I wonder if this will help. Alright, we got some kind of... Oh, this is the dam, isn't it? Okay. Ren. 1K, you've strayed far. Well, that gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. Uh, wait, what about the dome? Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. Wait, what are we talking about? What dome? Is it the dome above the city? It has two purposes. To protect New Jerusalem from the world. I guess so. And to protect the world from New Jerusalem. That sounds kind of... 
unhealthy and unintegrated. When is it going to be complete? At this rate, I'm not sure. Maybe another decade or two. Uh, does the world need protecting from us? That's what the founder taught us. One city may not seem like much, but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment. The consequences are still with us, even more than a thousand years later. Hmm. Doesn't building this huge dome consume too many resources? Seems antithetical to the goal. Uh, sure. I'm a baby. I can say stupid things. You're right. I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. Symbolic. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. All right, bye. And and by stupid things, I meant, oh, hey, I get to see my own face. Okay. By stupid things, I meant politically stupid. Like, don't know who you're going to be making angry or what list you're going to be put on. Well, I don't want to go any farther this way. I guess I can't get to the edge. It is supposed to be a whole city full of a thousand people, I guess. Well, I mean, a thousand people's not that many. Like, you could probably fi fit 10, 50,000 people in a dome this big. I and mean, like, I'm trying to think, I'm like, I live in a city, not a crowded part of the city, but I live in suburbs, and I'm trying to think how big of a radius it would take to get a thousand people. Probably, n probably like only, well, I guess maybe this big. Maybe not this big though. I think it's smaller than this. What do we have over here? Is this a statue of Drennan? What they think she might have looked like? Kilimachos. Jefferson. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. You must be the long-awaited 1K. Lovely day for a walk, is it not? Uh, do you notice the, a titanic Greek man appearing in the sky? Oh, that sounds very dramatic. I must admit I wasn't following the stream. <laughs> this whole completion day business is not for me. Oh, another reason why it probably wasn't from inside the city is because we don't have the energy to do something like that. The Alexandra Drennan Memorial. Are you interested in history? Yes. How wonderful. I'm not a full-fledged historian, but I do consider myself a bit of an aficionado. Uh, peterior pickle of history are you interested in? An excellent question. There's so many interesting events to choose from. Obviously, the period just before the end of biological humanity is interesting, and not only from the standpoint of it being the time when we were, in a manner of speaking, conceived, but also because our ancestors were, like ourselves, at a crossroads. Like ourselves? I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you are the living embodiment of this historical moment. In you, the goal was accomplished. Our growth is finished and we are complete. Or are we? So you're saying I'm the main character, are you? I seem to have been born in an interesting time. Uh, no, I won't say that. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, let's seem a bit interested in indeed boring time. The no, <laughs> is about to take shape for good or ill. I suspect it will be exhilarating, but painful as well. But tell me about the sculpture. Well, where do I even start? This, my dear One K is someone who could very well be considered the mother of us all. A remarkable scientist by the name of Alexandra Drennan, also known as the Progenitor. All right, cool. I remember her for the first game, so goodbye. Have a nice day. Oh, this must be the audio logs from the first game. All right. I guess I probably did end up just exploring the entire city, didn't I? There may be a few domes I missed. What's up, Sebastian? Hello. Hello. Uh, 
Yep, and here we are, back at the facility. Anything over here? Is that a person I spy? Or is it just a tree? I don't think feet are meant to come over here. I think it's just a place meant to look nice. Alright, so we can't explore the whole city. We just have this little hub area. Hep. Uh. Hep. Uh. Is it possible for... Oh, here we go. Ah! Oh. Jump, jump, jump. I think I have to go around the long way. Wait. There we go. If I balance very carefully, I can make it across here. If I balance carefully, I mean run at full speed. Yay! Okay, that definitely gives us a better understanding of the city as a whole. You guys with your... your protesting... Alright, I'll still continue to think about this, maybe go on a few missions before I sign anything with you. I think that's probably a good time to end this episode. Next time, we will go on our first mission and probably do some puzzles, because I assume there are actual new puzzles in this game. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Talos Principle 2 and other awesome games. I'll see you next time! Bye!